It is indeed a rare honor, privilege, and fortune for the family of National Institute of Advanced Studies to have the distinguished presence of His Holiness Dalai Lama with us today. We are indebted to His Holiness. I express my gratitude on behalf of all of you to him for his precious time agreeing to speak to us and dialogue with us. His Holiness the Dalai Lama combines eminence, wisdom, smiles, charm, and offers solutions to humanity. I am delighted, honored to invite and request His Holiness the Dalai Lama to deliver the first Nyas Distinguished Fellow Lecture, sir. So indeed, I feel great honor. You invited me uh, to talk or to share some of my own as an experience. I think except those old people, old brothers, sisters, uh, to younger people, I have, I feel some of my experience may get some sort of new, sort of today, uh, new ideas. So the, those older people, you already have, I think, same experiences. So it's nothing new to share with you. Right? <laughs> I want to sort of ask myself, what is the purpose of our life? A purpose of humanity in this planet. I think answer for our first question. Oh, the very purpose of our life is happy life, joyful life. I think it's reason simple. There is no guarantee about future, but we have to live on hope, no matter how difficult it is, oh, there will be some, some good things. Uh, with that hope, we keep our life. Once we completely certain, give up our hope, then that very attitude shorten our life. Then the worst thing, uh, then I think suicide. So therefore, we can say the very purpose of our life is for joyfulness or happy life. Now question is, uh, yes, for happy life. Good food, good shelter, in our modern days, good car, 
and good television and a mobile like that. These are, we consider the facility to give us because of the happy life, right? And then money. As a matter of fact, some of my friend, I think billionaire, very rich, some American, very rich, but as a person, very unhappy person. So that shows money will not bring joyfulness, happiness. I think sometimes it seems to say, more money, more worry, <laughs> more greed, <laughs> like that. <laughs> so then, uh, I think according, according to my own experience, now you see a uh, number of scientists also now, you see showing interest or agreement, the ultimate source of uh, joyfulness is not material value, external value. But within our, within our own sort of the mind, you see the ultimate source of happiness or joyfulness. Now here, uh, even you see the modern scientists, you see the, uh, in the past, you see there is not yet sort of clear sort of understanding the sensory level consciousness and the mental level consciousness. We usually call the English word consciousness or mind. I, uh, I do not know. I, I, I'm not very sure the exact meaning. But the whole my English like that, you see, without knowing properly, but I use some of these words. <laughs> I think in early 70, uh, or oh, yes, in 70s, my first visit to Europe, 1973. Then visit America, 1979. So at that time, one of my translator, one professor, one American, who speak, you see Tibetan, who understood Tibetan. So he helped me translation. So one occasion he uh, told me, your English, the audience, uh, I think, knows only half, not complete. <laughs> My English is very difficult. <laughs> so I'm not very sure. Uh, but, you see, usually I feel, according to Tibetan sort of word, mind or consciousness, basically, you see, two categories. One is a sensorial level. Uh, that's seeing, hearing, smelling, in a taste, a touch. So that's a sensory level. So material values provide us some sort of satisfaction on sensory level. Uh, that that any sort of joyfulness which come from material value is very short. And then more important, a sensory level is a very comfortable sort of house and good food and good friends, uh, music, but at the same time the person still uh, fear or worry too much stress, too much anxiety. So mental level, you see these uh, are some the problems. So the mental level, suffering, pain, cannot subdue by sensory level, joyfulness, right? Other hand, mental level, you have joyfulness or satisfaction. And then sensory level, even a solid life, right? solitude, solitude, solitude. One time I met one uh, Catholic monk in Barcelona, in Spain. Uh, 
Uh, I was told, you see, he spent five years in the mountain behind Monsroch so temple with very little hot meal, just tea and water and bread. So he spent five years such with, I mean, through such a solitude life. Uh, he came to see me. Uh, as I have one joke. You see, his English, I think, worse than my English. <laughs> hmm? So I have more courage to, uh, to speak my broken English with him. <laughs> so, so then, uh, I sort of, sort of, sort of just chat, right, talk, conversation. And I asked him, I was told, you spent five years in the mountain with a solitude life and very little sort of, because of the facilities like that. I asked, what kind of your practice or meditation during those years? And his answer, I meditate on love. When he mentioned that, I noticed in his eye some special significance. So that shows, you see, mental level, joyfulness, happiness, satisfaction, then physical level, difficulties, easily, because of the subdue, overcome, like that. So therefore, this shows mental level experience is more uh, sort of as they, powerful or more important than as the sensory level experience. So therefore, the material life, material sort of as the values, provide only physical level comfort. So we should not sort of content on that level. We have to find ways and means to bring deeper level of consciousness, that's mental consciousness, uh, bring some uh, inner joyfulness. So that also is very much related with inner strength, self-confidence. So usually, besides sort of anger, hatred, jealousy, uh, this Obviously, you see, we know this is something negative attitude towards other. But beside that, even if it's too much stress, worry, anxiety, related with too much self-centered attitude, always think me, 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 me. Then, even in reality, no problem. But because of that kind of too much self-centered attitude, you see, a lot of mental projection, that brings anxiety and stress. So therefore, the warm-heartedness, or another word, compassion, uh, is the real sort of, how it, because of that uh, source of, oh, or the inner strength. Through that way, you see, joyfulness or inner, inner peace come. So now when we talk about compassion or forgiveness, usually you see people consider these are religious matter. So those people who have not much interest about religion, this is also not much relevant. That is a wrong view. Whether I accept religion or not, that's up to individual. But even non-believers also is a one happy life as a human being. So uh, you see, the the concept of warm-heartedness is something universal value. Right? So now here, education, temple, church. Uh, good door, uh, I think, provide, provide us. Uh, 
Prashad. Prashad. Very tasteful. Uh, particularly when you feel hungry. Oh, then uh, uh, pilgrimage, Gurdwara. Uh, I have to suffer because of that. Confess, right? No. Confess. When I, uh, since 79, no, 74, I practice, uh, I start to practice a pilgrimage wherever sort of facility there, uh, each sort of the kind of spiritual places. So then sometimes, you see, uh, at the beginning, you see, church and mosque or some, uh, some, uh, some other sort of uh, spiritual uh, place. Then, uh, uh, afterward, you see, Gurdwara. And sometimes I feel a uh, pilgrimage to Gurdwara and hearing, you see, they are reciting they are sort of the scriptures, uh, very blessed, but my mind more concerned about the prasad. <laughs> prasad really, beside blessing, are really very, very tasteful. <laughs> so like that. So, yeah. all, so you see the teaching, wonderful. All major world tradition carry same message, same potential to bring inner peace through practice of love, forgiveness, tolerance, uh, contentment, so on, self-discipline. But uh, reality, it cannot cover seven billion human beings. Out of seven billion, over one billion, non-believer. Among the believer also, there are different sort of traditions. So one tradition, you see, cannot, you see, they cannot cover six billion believers. And then, of course, non-believer. So now only hope is education. Through hmm. education, we are not talking about next life, or heaven, or hell, or for Buddhist nirvana. Not talking that. That's the individual business. The business for society. Uh, education has very important sort of responsibility to build healthier, healthy-minded human being through education, through awareness. Uh, now, on the basis of scientific finding, not relying on quotation of some spiritual leaders, uh, for my own practice in a certain field, uh, scientific sort of finding, their explanation, sometimes very, very helpful to my own practice. So therefore, you see, uh, we already have you see, clear sort of evidence uh, through scientific sort of that research, they already sort of concluded for a healthy body, healthy family, it is very important, healthy mind. Healthy mind means calm, not agitated mind, not too much stress. So we have plenty of reasons through scientific sort of finding and also our common experience and common sense. You see, we can teach our younger generation. Everybody wants a happy life. So therefore, the ultimate sort of source of happiness is mental level, not sensory level. These, I think, uh, in a way, Buddhist psychology. So I often, you see, expressing the ancient Indian psychology, highly developed, but modern Indian, a little bit narrated about these things. <laughs> so actually, the ancient Indian psychology, highly developed. So compare modern psychology, modern psychology looks like kindergarten level. The ancient Indian psychology, highly developed. So fortunate or unfortunate, 
the, the ultimate or the real source of this knowledge from India. But our Indian uh, gurus uh, not much pay attention about these things. So we as a Chela, now over a thousand years, we kept intact this knowledge. So, <laughs> now, uh, our sort of uh, long time friend, the French sort of scientist, he knows. You see, we, uh, we Tibetan Buddhist scholars, you see, when we sit together with the modern scientists, so there are plenty of things to discuss, to share each other, right? like that. So therefore, hmm. anyway, as a Tibetan, it's fortunate we kept your knowledge. Uh, uh, anyway, unfortunate is the real source of this knowledge, our uh, Indian guru, now neglected. Only some rituals, <laughs> some prayer. <laughs> so, uh, so now that uh, I publicly, quite often, you see, mentioning existing modern education system, very much oriented about material value, as I mentioned before. Uh, so, not much pay attention about our deeper human psychology or system of our mind or emotion according to Indian psychology, right? or knowledge, or science of mind, not sufficient to pay attention. Now, these, I think, should include in modern education or the field. So actually, we are working, you see, uh, with full cooperation with some American scientists and educationists. Now, in Delhi, some uh, in, uh, Indian universities also now showing uh, some interest in these things. So we are already working, making draft curriculum about secular ethics, which can fit in secular education field, like that. So this institution, I hope more research on this work. I think very, very helpful, very useful. Then, in terms of happy world, also you see now related to these things. Everybody, every continent, people, generally see people, really uh, express need, peace. I think in, in early part of 20th century, is when nation declare war, I think every citizen of that nation, without question, proudly join war effort. Now that completely changed. One nation, one nation, when you see declare some war, some violence, and then I think many citizens of that country now express rejection. I think since Vietnam War. Uh, and then many also the uh, violence take place. Now, for example, I think Iraq War started. I think millions of people express uh, anti war, anti violence. So these, I think, sign the people. Now, more and more sort of, sort of enthusiasm. We want peace. It is quite logical. Once war starts, the suffering, sufferer, those poor people, the people who create war, they some way, so some, so, 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 somehow, you see, they survived, not much suffering. Then people on the street, poor people, old people, women, young children, they suffer most. Sometimes I jokingly express, now modern technology, modern scientists, I think should produce one bullet. You see, uh, I think 
heat seeking something, isn't it? Usually, usually we already have malware seeking kind of laser. No? So similarly, you see the bullet, you see goes the person who actually created this problem. <laughs> Go hit. Then I think wonderful. <laughs> Not hitting on innocent people. Isn't it? <laughs> so that I think difficult. So the machines, weapons, no consciousness, no ability distinction, who are really troublemaker and innocent. So then people suffer a lot. Now the Syrian sort of situation, Iraq, Iran, this area. So many of these refugees, young children and mother and old people, really, very sad, very sad. So in order to uh, create peaceful world, weapon will not bring peace. Uh, money also, economy also not necessarily bring peace. Since you see problem, violence start from here. Anger, hatred, suspicion, distrust. So that brings violence. So we have to tackle the ultimate source of violence. That's our hardness. So therefore, so education, I think, should pay more attention about ultimate source of inner peace individual level as well as because of the humanity level. When we talk humanity, combination of individual. So firstly, individual, you see, should create inner peace. Then, with one person, share with 10 people, your friend. Then 100 people, then 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. Through that way, change of humanity's way of life, way of thinking. So, the education is key factor to change our world, bring happy world. So I usually used to describe the two generations, generation of now quite quite warm. Uh, generation of twentieth century and the generation of twenty first century. So generation of 20th century, that's my, my generation. So among the audience, I think quite a number. <laughs> we are same sort of category, <laughs> the generation of 20th, 20th century. Uh, so our century already gone. Uh, whether happy century or uh, sort of because of the uh, miserable century, already gone. Now, nobody can change that. Now, to the first century, uh, as it is, 15 years past, the remaining years yet to come. So, future always possible to change. So, the generation of the 21st century, you have opportunity to make a better world, and later part of this 21st century, more peaceful, more harmony, more compassionate century, then you will enjoy. When you become old, then uh, you get the world, a uh, happy world. Uh, and then you can blame all the mistakes, all the suffering. Point to generation of 20th century. They create a lot of problems. <laughs> so you should feel proud. We built new century, happy world. And the generation of 20th century, they really spoiled the peaceful world, including Dalai Lama. So that's very good. Thank you. So now I prefer interaction, right? Interaction. Questions and the suggestions and the criticism. Very good. See, uh, here as a sort of, as of the academic, the academic sort of center. So we trained as a Nalinda sort of uh, student, right, Nalinda, follow-up Nalinda, 
instruction. So we train logic. When we study logic, a lot of argument. So although I am quite lazy student when I carry study, but however, I have little knowledge here. So I want to show you this knowledge through <laughs> argument. Okay. And then also is it uh, one monk there, also good scholar, uh, like that. So, thank you.